Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class, or your commentary on the Bible. And before we do anything, we always like to open with a word of prayer. So let's do that right now. Father, once again, we thank you today for the Word of God. And as we find ourselves in Mark chapter 9, Lord, we're going to be learning some beautiful things, some wonderful things about Jesus Christ. And uh, how he is that wonderful Savior. Now, Lord, we pray your blessing upon the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we find ourselves now in Mark chapter 9, verse number 14. It says that Jesus came with his disciples, and a great multitude uh, were around him. And the scribes began to dispute with them. Immediately they saw him, and all the people were greatly amazed, running to greet him. So here is Jesus' disciples. He has just come down from the Mount of Transfiguration, this glorious experience. And the first thing he runs into is people having an argument. And they asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? And uh, so uh, then one of the t multitude answered and said, Teacher, I have brought my son to you with a mute spirit. And whenever he, it's the spirit seizes him, he throws him down, and he becomes rigid, and he foams at the mouth. So I spoke to your disciples, uh, and they could not cast him out, the spirit out. And Jesus answered, how faithless generation, how long will I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. So Jesus comes from this wonderful experience. He has a scribe bringing his son to his disciples to uh, uh, cast the demon out, and he, they couldn't do it. So Jesus goes, oh, faithless generation, how long am I going to have to put up with you? And uh, so it seems rather, you know, he's just moaning within his spirit over the whole situation. So then they brought him to him, and when he saw the young man, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he was having uh, uh, an immediate reaction. And he asked, "How?" Jesus asked the father, how long has he been doing this? He says, well, basically from, from uh, childhood. And often he throws himself into the fire, into water, destroy him. But you can do anything, have compassion, and help us. So here is this declaration of faith by this scribe, by this leader. He, he's, he's, he's making a declaration. He says, I know that you can touch him, so please have compassion. And Jesus says, well... If you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So Jesus answered him and said, well, if you have believed, all things are possible. Isn't that a great promise for us to stand on? My Immediately the father cried out in with tears, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. What a declaration. He, he, he was crying through his tears. Here is a leader who is more concerned about his, the condition of his son than his tradition. And he says, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. I need help. When Jesus saw the people running together, he rebuked the spirit and said, Come out, you deaf and dumb spirit. I command you to come out of him and enter him no more. Now, this is a very important lesson, okay? There are some maladies. There are some things that people face which are totally natural. But there's also, as well, supernatural type of diseases and afflictions, and it takes real discernment to know what to do, because some are demonic in origin. And that's where the wisdom of discernment comes in. Uh, I should say uh, the gift of discernment and wisdom to be able to know what it is that you're dealing with. Then the Spirit cried out, convulsed grazely, came out of him, and he laid as one like dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he rose. So the Spirit leaves, and all of a sudden, the boy looks dead. But Jesus is not deterred by that. He goes, takes hand the hand of the young man, and lifts him up. And the disciples came later and said, Why is it that we couldn't cast him out? Jesus then answered and said, Listen, this kind of spirit doesn't come out by anything but prayer and fasting. So there are certain spirits that are so powerful that the only way that you can take care of them is by prayer and 
and fasting. And this is one of those types. And so it's really important to discern what you're dealing with and then how to deal with it. Well, they departed from that place and they passed through Galilee and he didn't want anyone to know it. So Jesus wanted to travel incognito for he wanted to teach his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and after he is killed, he will rise from the dead. But they didn't understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. So while they were traveling incognito, Jesus then began to say, listen, guys, what's going to happen is one of these days I'm going to be handed over to the hands of men, and they're going to kill me. And but I'm going to rise again. So Jesus is again setting the stage for them to get ready for his departure. Well, they get to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, there was a dispute among them on the road. But they kept silent, for on the road they had disputed among themselves who was going to be the greatest. So basically they're saying, you know, I'm going to be greater than you. And they were having that dispute. But they didn't want to talk to Jesus about it. So he sat them down on the twelfth. And if anyone, now Jesus knew what they were talking about. So he says, if anyone desires to be first, He has to become the servant of all. That's how it works in the kingdom. It deals with pride. The kingdom deals with ego and pride and self-reliance because that's the things that actually lead us away from God and put put emphasis on ourselves. He then took a little child, put in the midst of them, and said, he, he said, Whoever receives these little ones in my name receives me. For whoever receives me is just like him, the one who sent me. Jesus says, you got to accept me as a little child. A little child just simply accepts whatever is told them as gospel truth, unless otherwise proven. And so many times we let our kids down and make them cynical because of the fact that we don't follow through with what he has. Now, John answered him saying, teacher, we saw someone who uh, was uh, casting out uh, demons in your name and we met him because he's do- he did not follow us. So here's John saying, well, there's this guy, he was casting out demons in your name <laughs> and we tried to stop him. And you know what Jesus says? Don't forbid him. No one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. And whoever gives you a cup of wa- cold water in my name because you belong to Christ, he says, assuredly, I say, that one will not move, re- lose his reward. So Jesus says, don't stop him. He says he's working for me, and he's not going to speak evil of me when he's doing things in my name. And folks, this is kind of interesting. This guy was doing it even before Jesus had been uh, died, buried, and rose again. So Jesus just says, don't do that, because what he's doing is he's giving everyone a cold cup of water in my name. So he says, realize that today. And then he goes on to say, whoever causes these little ones uh, to who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a millstone r- thrown around their neck and thrown in the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off, for it is better to enter into life maimed than having two hands and go into hell into fire that quenches. And where the worm does not die and the fire not quench. And then he goes on to say, and if your foot makes you con- uh, makes you sin, cut it off. He says, you don't want to enter eternal life lame and having two feet and be cast into hell in the fire that never quenches where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. If your eyes cause you to sin, it would be better to do that. He says to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than two eyes where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched for everyone will be seasoned with fire and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but salt loses its favor. And how can you season it and have salt in yourself if you cannot salt one another? So Jesus talks about hell, and he talks about casting out those things. Now, he's literally not telling you to maim yourself, but he is reminding you that there are things in your life that will lead you to hell. You need to cut them off. You need to get rid of them. And he also said it three times. Now, Jesus authenticates that there is a place of judgment. Hell, there's a lot of people out there who don't believe in hell, but Jesus 
authenticates it because he is God with a face. And if Jesus says it's there, it is there. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what your denomination brings. It doesn't matter. Jesus authenticated it. And he says that is where the worm never dies. That is where... um, It's unquenchable fire. It is a place of damnation. It's a place where people who do not know the Lord are going to find themselves in. That's why we need to pray for our family. And he goes on to say, he says, you need, everything's going to be basically tested by fire. Our works are going to be tested by fire. We're, God's going to find out w- whether our works are wood, hay, and stubble, gold, silver, precious stones. You know, fire will uh, will test it and will also purify things. And then Jesus also said, salt is good. We need to, we need to have our works tested, but also as well, we need to be people of salt preserving and, and seasoning our world. But he says, you got to have peace with yourself and peace with one another. That's what the whole aim and goal is. Jesus taught all of these things here in the book of Mark chapter 9. Just some thoughts for you today from your commentary on the Bible or your daily Bible class with me, Robert Dean Steele. You have yourself a great and godly day.